Next, we're going to learn about the rectus sheath. So start by drawing a line to represent skin and then another line to represent scarpa fascia. Next, we're going to draw three muscles on each side, represented by a triangle. So these are your external oblique, your internal oblique, and your transversus abdominis. And it's the same on this side. And then we'll draw the rectus muscles here in the middle. These are kind of like two eye shapes, I think of them as. And then we're going to add in the aponeurosis. So the external oblique runs anteriorly. And then to the other side. The internal oblique has an anterior lamella and a posterior lamella of aponeurosis. So that joins here, sorry. And then round here. And then transversus abdominis is posterior only. And then you have the transversalis fascia. And then you have an inner layer for the parietal peritoneum. So that's above the arcuate line. Now the difference is the aponeurosis. So when you get below the arcuate line, then what happens is you will have the rectus muscles like this. And if you imagine the skin and scarpa fascia are the same, and then you have the three muscles on each side. And then what happens is the aponeurosis now for each one runs above. So that's transversus. This is internal oblique and this is external oblique. And then underneath you have the transversalis fascia. And you also will have the inferior epigastric artery here. So it's something to be aware of. So if you imagine, instead of having this many layers between the rectus and the peritoneum, they're suddenly very, very close. So doing a rectus sheath block below the arcuate line could be um, a lot more difficult and risky.